Hi everybody, welcome to a new edition of Let's Talk About Education with Antonio Corrales. We have talked in this show before about what does it mean to manage an educational program. We have also heard from perspective from students, but we have never talked about the impact of parental involvement on educational entities. Well, today we have the honor to have with us Dr. Dr. Felix Simio, who is a seasoned educator, university professor, and somebody who is passionate about this topic and has been working on it for years. He's going to tell us in simple terms the impact of parental involvement in school culture on student achievement. Felix, thanks so much for being with us today. All right, thank you. Absolutely. Glad to be here. Okay. okay, why don't we start by letting you introduce yourself to the audience and kind of letting them know, you know, how do you get to where you are in your career? Okay. Uh, well, I've always um, been around education. My family is just uh, all being in education from my mother Grandmother, uh, aunts, uh, cousins, we all are just have been in administration or just in teaching in some capacity. And uh, so I've always felt good about it. Uh, and I, I didn't want to go into education, believe it or not, but it was more of a calling for me. Okay. And that's what kind of led me to kind of do those things. And it led me to go to get my degrees. And I, of course, served as an elementary teacher, served as an administrator, and I've been here now 13 years. Wow. And uh, been able to do a lot of research within the area of parent involvement. So, and it's been one that I've been passionate about since doing my dissertation uh, in the early 2000s, uh, you know, with it. That is fantastic. Now, now, it's funny that you mentioned the calling thing because uh, I think that's a lot of, that's the case of a lot of educators that at the beginning starting different careers, so they have their thoughts uh, want to be a different career bro something in their heart ended up pushing them to to education mm -hmm. yeah and you know this catch this actually connects a lot to to this topic that we're talking today which is um parental involvement and and, and the impact that it has on school culture and, and in the end it's still an achievement so what what are your uh what can you tell us about the role in your opinion your, the role that um parental involvement has on on schools and, and in students because sometimes that that's a topic that uh, you know you and I are in schools all the time sometimes it's a topic that that administrators and even teachers sometimes underestimate thinking mm -hmm. focusing more on uh, standard testing uh, mm -hmm. or academic instead of parental involvement and, mm -hmm. and that partnership becomes really important so what can you tell us about that to me it's a huge part I, I would really almost call it like the missing link okay. that a lot of schools don't take advantage of mm -hmm. Uh, the reason I even got to looking at parent involvement is everything that I found, particularly when looking with parent involvement with minorities, particularly African Americans. Okay. Uh, it was always from a deficit model. Okay. It was always talking about how parents are not there, um, you know, with it, and that's what led me in my dissertation to focus on the positive aspects of African American parent involvement. And I specifically looked in low socioeconomic schools mm -hmm. because I wanted to know what was going on in these schools that were successful, mm -hmm. that had parents that were involved all the time. Mm -hmm. So the schools I was able to do my uh, study on was able to show me some things from a qualitative perspective to find out why. You know, they And they had nothing to do with money, right? I mean, no, those, those, no. those, those uh, schools that you studied in your research, they their involvement was was regardless of their the, the money that they made or the, the socioeconomic status in general, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it, it was Title One school, so they have additional funding to make some things that you know that can happen mm -hmm. uh, with it. But what these schools were able to do was to was able to tap into the relationship building mm -hmm. to where the parents wanted to be a part of the school, to where there was a pride and being involved with those schools. And the administrators used that to their advantage mm -hmm. to where they had parents that volunteered all the time, mm -hmm. to where teachers would do different topics. For example, uh, one of the problems that the schools were having with uh, math with some of their fifth graders was measurement. Mm -hmm. Well, they had some parents that were carpenters that would mm -hmm. come in and they would build some things and show the students the practical use of measurement and how those things would go. Mm -hmm. So it made it real for them. So that was using that resource that they had and just to show the parents how important they were to where they wanted to come in, it made them feel good that they were able to give back. So it's tapping in to where you're benefiting all sides of it. And so. taking, taking the strength and, uh, of the parents to, to, to involve them, that, you sound mm -hmm. like yep. mm -hmm. that is fantastic. And, and now, was, was that an event? Because a lot of times we see schools that, that, that want to do that, mm -hmm. but they struggle getting there mm -hmm. what do you find 
uh, for special administrators who may be looking at us right now um, uh, and educators, what do you find that were the steps to effectively reach out to parents? Because because you you sometimes you see in the school sometimes either parents want to do it but the administrator is not receptive or the educators are not receptive or vice versa. You know, administrators want to do an educators, but then parents are not in the same page. So, what do you find to to get that that teamwork? One of the first things that an administrator has to do is to be able to go in and know their environment, okay. to know the climate that they're working in, know the culture of the schools that they're going to be in. Once they do that, they can start building things around that. So, for example, with the schools that I did my dissertation with. They were schools that were in areas that had uh, a lot of plants that mm -hmm. were around there. So with those plants that were there, they had a lot of shift workers, mm -hmm. um, you know, with it. So they're working 12 hour, you know, 12 hour shifts. So you can't have it to where you're, you're getting parent engagement activities that's at 930 in the morning mm -hmm. on, uh, you know, one, you know, once a month. You're not going to have a high level, particularly if you're trying to get fathers involved. Uh, you know, to where you're working those things. So knowing your knowing knowing your culture, knowing you know knowing the climate, and all those things. I'm gonna build things around there. So instead of having that one meeting a month, I'm gonna have a meeting that's in the morning, and I'm gonna have another one that's in the evening. But I'm gonna avoid Wednesdays because on Wednesdays this culture here that I'm working with, they're in church on that day. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna know the know the clientele that I'm working with, so I can do those things and then tap into those strengths. So they end up sending surveys out. The parent, the, the, the principal was always out talking to the parents. So it was not a thing to where you would go in that campus and find that, that, that principal behind a closed door. Mm -hmm. It was always out there talking and in, in modeling that it made the teachers in hand go out there and talk to and find out those things as well. So like they end up having so many events, like they would have a block party at the end of the year. The block party was sponsored by the parents to where they would come out. You had some parents that cooked a lot. Uh, you know, to where they would end up having different areas where they had different foods and all those things available for the things. Wow. You had parents that had different That's crafts and all PTA. those things. Oh, yeah, definitely. This is just the parents, you know, doing things for the school. And the, the money and things that they raise, they end up putting right back into the school to mm -hmm. make different things happen. So it was using this resource to push and give back to when I saw at the end of the year, the students that end up passed were successful on the uh, state test. Not only did the plants end up giving things, but they had like bikes and things for every student, but this from funding and things that would raise from working with those parents. Wow. So it was tapping into the resource, and that's why I said it's one of the hidden gems that um, that a lot of a lot of ministers just don't tap into, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to use them as a resource. That is fantastic. Now another area that I know you're really strong on, it, and you do you help a lot of schools to even. In, in the in the topic of uh, school environment and, and school culture, um, I remember. Uh, by the way, for my viewers, this guy right here was my professor, in, a master professor, and my doctoral professor. So we we go uh, a long time back, but but I remember that you talking about um, the importance of uh, the, the the first the first interaction, the first experience that parents may have. With you know, with the staff in schools and administrators, what can you tell us a little bit about, about that topic? Well, that's more about knowing your particular environment. So, like one of the things I had you all do, and I encourage all administrators to do, is to get a walkthrough, you know, of your environment, you know, with these things to see what's going on. Is it friendly? I mean, do you have it set up to where when people come into your school, is it one that's telling you to come in? We want you here. Or is it one that's shooting you down? I mean, it's, it's as simple as having a signage in front of your buildings. You may have one sign that says, welcome to our school, come to the front office and sign in, and you know, and, 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 uh, and we'll you know, meet you here. Or you can have a sign that says, stop, do not enter. You know, uh, come to the front office. Same same thing, but two different messages that is uh, given. Uh, it went into one school, for example, to where when it was a middle school, and they had different, you know, of course, the signage with different policies, mm -hmm. with attendance and all these things, and even things of making sure that people knew not to have different weapons or different things on campus, or like mm -hmm. knives. So you think pocket knives and all these things here. Interesting thing, they only had it written in Spanish. So what am I <laughs> telling my Spanish, you know, you know, you know, my Spanish speaking parents, you know, things. So we send different messages <laughs> in our like, schools. Like you are the lingua, baby. <laughs> yes, I mean seriously. But we do stuff like that, and we think that we're doing it for the betterment of it. But it's actually sending 
disapproving messages right. to the stakeholders that we're working with. Right. So right. you you have to really get in the know. And I, and even when you're doing this, I encourage you to have outside people to come in and help to you look at these things because we go into the same buildings and different things every day. We're not going to catch everything. You know, stuff stuff just comes secondhand nature to us. And that, that trickles down also to the hallways, right? Not oh, only, yeah, Not only definitely. the main interest, but everything. Right? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, even having it to where signage just to where we know how to get around the building. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these schools are getting much more complex in how they're mm -hmm. building them. And you, you get lost in some of them. I know Absolutely. I will easily with these things, but making it friendly. You know, for the parents again, to where they want to be there, to where they feel comfortable being there. Now, and, and do you, within your research, have you seen when when you have that synergies and that that teamwork, and and like you're saying, the the, the building, the facilities, and the, and the staff have been training customer service according to their clientele and everything. Have you seen that impact on student achievement and mm -hmm. student behavior? Because yeah, that's definitely. one of the main concerns. I mean, when you have it to where. We're all on the same page. We're all working together. So having having the child is watching everything that we're doing. They're looking at the interactions and all those things that we end up having. So if that child can constantly see where that, that, that parent is comfortable being there, comfortable talking to, and to where that teacher even feels comfortable talking to that parent. That's why we have to train our teachers to know what these interactions. One of the things I hate is with our brand new teachers. Just think about even a first parent teacher conference that they go to. There's very little training that goes on with telling teachers how to do those things. Mm -hmm. So when you have a brand new teacher, they're not gonna feel comfortable saying everything that needs to be said in that first conference. But knowing to teach them how to talk to parents to get those things together can truly make a difference because those parents know their children. They're gonna be able to give us insights that we may not think about and get that feedback. So that's why we have to have positive interactions with parents as well so like one of the things that i would do with my students is i would end up uh making sure that i can give some kind of positive praise so i had, had little stickers and different things or like little tickets that i would end up giving out and then the children can end up coming back i may end up having like a free ice cream or something i wouldn't do it all the time exactly. but i did it you know whenever i could and then when I would do things like that, I would call a parent and let them know, hey, your child was doing something good today. Mm -hmm. And modeling that the teacher started doing those things. So in getting that communication going, getting those conversations going, it would go to where the parents wouldn't ignore that school call every time they saw the Correct. school number coming up because it's not always negative well, one when of the, One of the main complaints that parents complain is that all the time teachers call them most of the time, and you look at the research of that, is that they call them for negative things. Mm -hmm. So that's really important, important in implementing that positive culture mm -hmm. so the parents know when they're calling me, not necessarily to complain about my child, but to, to, mm -hmm. to tell me something good. Yeah, yeah, and I just think it's a good practice. And I'm not saying you have to call every day, but every month I'm going to try to find so-and-so doing something right. Uh, you know, with it. Right. I'm, 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 I may just make it to where I'm just trying to see who's that exceptional kid that's that, you know, that's just kind of stepping out, going a little extra mile. And what ends up happening is uh, the students see these things, mm -hmm. they're going to want to get that same kind of recognition as well. So it's a trickle-down effect Correct. that ends up happening as well. And there are positively affected behavior mm -hmm. and student achievement and all that. Yep. Now, why can't you, and I think you, you, you can talk a little bit about that, but if you will have to give some recommendations to uh, administrators and teachers who are maybe looking at us right now, what in, in they're they're trying to improve their relationship with parents. Mm -hmm. What 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 would you recommend them to do? What will the next steps that you mm -hmm. you will tell them? First thing is talk to them. You know, find out. You know, what are some needs they have? What mm -hmm. are they struggling with? All this is again getting to know the people that you are working with, and that way you can try to give some of those things back. Be informative. I mean, share with them as new initiatives mm -hmm. and all these things come out. Uh, give them resource to be able to, to benefit them and helping their children get these things together. So the needs that I'm going to have as an elementary parent are going to be totally different from the needs I'm going to have as a high school parent. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you're experiencing right now, you know, with a child getting ready to go to college, uh, you know, with these things. What kind of resources are you giving me at this high school as a parent? Yes, we definitely have the academic side, but in the school, we're developing the whole child. Mm -hmm. So with the high school aspect, what are we doing to prepare you for life after, you know, high school? So, and you have a lot of times with the parents, 
their first generations, you know, uh, students that are going to college for the first time. So what can we do to give those parents the extra the extra help they may not get once they leave us? They may not know how to fill out the FAFSA form. Exactly. They may not know how to how to visit a web page to apply mm-hmm. for a college, those kind yeah. of things. Mm-hmm. Being available, I mean, communicating. I mean, utilizing social media, finding the commu- the mode of communication that works best for your particular environment. Because what works in one environment may not work for another one. You may have some that be, may be more savvy in Facebook, some may be more savvy in Twitter, mm-hmm. some may be more savvy in Instagram, or, or another form of communication. Mm-hmm. Find the what works for you. And you have to kind of, you're gonna have trial and error sometimes with these things. It's not gonna happen overnight. But find what works for the environment that you're working in. And that's what's going to make the difference. That's fantastic. Now, to finalize, how do you see the future of schools and public education in general within the next year? I mean, you're you're in charge of the uh, you know principal certification program. You have been an educator for life, and also the doctoral program. What? How do you see the future of public education within the next years? Uh, the craziest thing is. With education, with a, a lot of research I've done, it's cyclical. Mm-hmm. You know, we see a lot of the same things over and over again. Mm-hmm. You know, with it, I do see technology end up taking a much more, uh, much more hold. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm hoping that it doesn't end up eliminating the need for us. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, in a lot of ways, ways. yeah. Because I mean, we see a lot of things going online. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, for yeah. example, and that's kind of cutting out. Yeah. Um, you know, some things with that, with that interaction with it. But uh, definitely technology, I see that's end up coming in. I'm curious to see what's going to end up happening with tests because I'm seeing a differences with the collegiate area. I mean, think about even the process we've gone through with the GRE yes. and looking with some things. And SATs are different mm-hmm. that we're seeing uh, with some college admittance exams. So I'll be curious to see what end up happening with the state standardized test. Mm-hmm. That's going, I don't know what it is because, I mean, it's, it's, it hasn't gone yeah, away. It has, it's, you know, I can say that, but I'll be yeah. curious to know how we continue to evolve, mm-hmm. uh, you know, as well. So. Wow. That's pretty interesting. Well, I want to thank you one more time yeah, for being no here problem. today. Thank you. Folks out there, right now that we have this interview and many others in Antonio Corrales' YouTube channel, Let's Talk About Education with Antonio Corrales and Sterling Valuation and Assessment.com. Please help somebody today and see you next time. All right. Thank you.